Hey everybody, welcome to another episode on the AI Guide where we focus on the human impact of AI and associated exponential technologies. So this video and the next one are a little bit longer, but they're extremely important and you'll see why. This week our shorts are a single topic with two videos on it and the regular episodes likewise are a single topic with two videos on it why major news came out regarding the episodes. So what are these episodes about? They're about autonomous driving. Big, big news has come out in this sector. So to start off, you may recall that I'm thinking about two months ago, I did a video on an article where they said self-driving cars were a long way off. And the thesis of that video was that this was dead wrong. Here is the proof only two months later that I was right about that. So let's dive straight into it. So this article is from ID TechX. I've talked about them before. They survey many aspects of technology globally to point out what's happening with them. Level three vehicles are now on the road. Here is when it will be mainstream. Mercedes is rolling out driverless SAE level three technologies in Germany and the US. When and how will this trickle down to the mass market? The article goes on to say, time and again, Mercedes flagship luxury sedan, the S-Class, has been the trailblazer and trendsetter when it comes to future technologies for passenger cars. It may not always be the first to adopt a new technology. In fact, Honda technically beat it to level three vehicles, but it is iconic for honing new features and setting the pace for the industry. Mercedes achieved level three certification in Germany and the US. This means that for the first time, drivers in these regions will be able to take their hands off the wheels, feet off the pedals, that's the distinction, and mind off the driving, that's the ultimate distinction here. Others will soon join the level three club, Tesla, GM, and Ford. Now that Mercedes has a certified level three vehicle, these automakers will quickly respond. However, none of the vehicles that will be certified now as level three are mass market vehicles. It will take a little longer for the technology to trickle down to the mass market. Why? Uh, an S-Class sedan is near a hundred grand. <laughs> and Tesla charges 15,000 for FSD full self-driving on top of the cost of the car. So that makes it very expensive. So now the article talks a little bit about what level three is versus what level two is. The total car market has been automating slowly over time with advanced driver assistance systems, ADAS is what it's, abbreviated as, features growing in adoption and capability. In fact, ID TechX has measured that the number of level two vehicles which combine ACC, that's adaptive cruise control, which means that it can speed the car up and slow it down automatically, and lane keep assistance systems, that's LCAS, so level two includes adaptive cruise control and LCAS lane keeping assistance systems. ID TechX has measured the number of level two vehicles. In 2023, ID TechX expects level two vehicles to account for 41% of all new car sales, nearly double the 21% back in 2020, so only three years ago. Level two has gone to from 21% market penetration three years ago to 41% now. They go on to say that 
Features like ACC, Adaptive Cruise Control, and LCAS Lane Keeping Assistance Systems can now be called mainstream, with 91% of new cars sold today having one or the other. It's the both that makes it a level two car. However, it took more than 15 years to get to this point, with LCAS first seen in 2007 and ACC all the way back in 1999. What does all this mean? Before we do that, I want to talk about a whole other sector that is undergoing automation separately from passenger cars. So my viewers know that level three autonomy has already been in place for heavy duty trucks for a while now. There's been years now of autonomous semi-tractor trailer trucks driving back and forth on I-10 from Florida all the way to Arizona. There's a whole other aspect of things that's going on with both passenger vehicles and trucks. I've talked a bunch about this aspect that I'm about to talk about with cars, but listen to this on trucks. Despite the medium and heavy duty truck fleet representing less than 10% of global on-road vehicle stock, meaning 90% plus of vehicles on the road are light duty pickup trucks or passenger cars, large diesel truck engines and high average annual mileage means that the truck sector contributes 40% of greenhouse gas emissions by vehicles equating to around 5.1% of all fossil fuel caused CO2 emissions. Therefore, there's been substantial progress in truck electrification in the past few years. Almost all OEMs, original equipment manufacturers, now either have a battery electric model in series production or are committed to starting within the next year. Supply chains are maturing and major tier one suppliers are putting substantial resources into parts electrification and shifting focus away from traditional combustion engine powertrains. Starting next year, trucks will be available with battery electric, plug-in hybrid, and hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. So there's two different things going on here. One is autonomy and the other is electrification. These are tied hand in hand for different reasons. One is the first reason for autonomy is huge revenue potential in the future. Watch the very next episode to learn more on that for staggering numbers. The second reason is climate change. Vehicles are going to electrify, period, due to climate change, and they're automating for economic reasons for the car companies. And these two are being done in tandem because it's easier to make these changes in tandem than it is to do two separate projects over many more years to accomplish these two goals. So what does all this mean then? I've said this before, and it especially bears saying here, given the fact that two months ago, there was an article saying self-driving vehicles were a long way off, and now they've been certified in Germany and the US. Humans are exceptionally bad at predicting exponential change. I'll say that again because it's extremely important to everything we do here on the AI Guide. Humans are exceptionally bad at predicting exponential change. Now you ask, why can you, if that's true, how can you rely on me to give you the skinny like two months ago when stuff in the media that's flat out wrong is out there? I can tell you why. First of all, I've been in IT for more than 20 years. Secondly, my last company that I worked with was in aerospace, meaning airplanes, helicopters, stuff like that. And the company I work for now is in the light vehicle market space, 
uh, with certain things. So I've worked with companies directly involved with the transportation sector across the entire spectrum. That's number one. Number two, not only that, but I have implemented 10 ERP systems, which are the main computer systems that control corporations over my career. And I've also been responsible as a co-lead with the engineering teams for multiple automation projects involving robotics in these environments. So I have basically an overview background to everything that is happening in technology, robotics, automation in a hands-on way. I am not just a technologist. That's why I can put the big picture together and see things that others don't. It's because I've been there, done that, number one and number two. Basically, all I read about is this stuff. So, um, autonomous vehicles, level three is here. Again, level two means you have to, you're still holding the steering, well, you're not holding the steering wheel in GM cars and trucks as of a couple of years ago. Tesla, same thing, going back five years. But you still have to have your pedal, feet on the pedals. And most importantly, you are required to pay attention. This, you do not have to pay attention. You do have to be prepared to intervene, but you do not have to pay attention all the time. What is level four then that's next? Level four is you don't have to pay attention any of the time, but there's still a steering wheel and pedals and stuff in the car. Whereas level five, think robo taxi is no steering wheel, no driver, no pedals, nothing. The car or vehicle does it all itself. And we'll talk about that next video. My guidance is that level three autonomy will be out fleet wide in five years versus the 15 it took for level two. Why? Because computer chips are so much more powerful now. And then level four will start getting licensed in the second half of this decade, think 2026, they'll start licensing level four and that will be rolling out over the remainder of the decade. And then in parallel is the whole robo taxi thing, which is level five. Autonomy is here. What does this mean? The, I started the AI guide to prepare people 18 to 34 who will be heavily impacted by AI and automation at the peak of their working careers. Start moving away from being a driver. If you're a driver, give yourself time. <laughs> Learn another trade, plumbing, electrical. Those will be not be automated for a long time, that kind of work. Nursing, uh, you can get a two-year nursing certification. Uh, now is the time to prepare. Finally, click the link below, free resource. This resource will tell you much more about AI than we can do in these short videos, and it will help prepare you for what's coming. And finally, please like, subscribe, and share. We're just a few viewers from 900, and then the next mile post is 1,000, which is a huge, huge marker for YouTube channels. Only 10% of YouTube channels ever make it to 1,000 subscribers. Please like, subscribe, and share, and click the link below for your resource. Thanks so much. Take care. See you next time. Bye.